Have you ever wondered what are the rules about segmenting words into syllables? We talk about children reading by syllables, but how do you even know where to find the beginning and the end of a syllable? This is part one of how to exactly to do that. So this is how to do syllable division. We're going to start off with the simple things and then we'll move on to some more complicated ones. So quick Google search before I started this. There are between six and 12 rules about dividing words into syllables. Now for the average person, that's way too many. And there are lots of interpretations of that. So in this video, I'm going to go through my rules, which is keep it simple and apply common sense language knowledge. So if you can sound out the word that's close enough, if you know that word, you will be able to get to that word and be able to read that word. So the basics I teach when I teach syllable division is look for the vowel, the consonant and chop. Vowel, consonant, chop. And all my students know that. Oh yes, miss, vowel, consonant, chop. So some further rules that you may or may not know. Every syllable must have a vowel in it. It could be a letter Y. If you've watched my letter Y video, you'll have seen that letter Y is often a vowel. Um, but the only letter that's allowed then on its own in a single syllable is Y. So if we were doing the word happy, H-A-P-P -P would be one syllable. Y can go on the end and a syllable on its own because he's making the sound E, which is a vowel sound. In the way I teach, I teach you to keep the twins or double letters together. We need to keep digraphs and trigraphs together. So that's two letters like SH and then trigraphs like TCH, they need to stay together. And we may want to follow the prefix, the base word and the suffix. That might be more sensible, more common sense approach to breaking up the words. And I've got some examples of this as we go through. So how do we code for syllable division? So first of all, we're going to find the vowel and we're going to mark it with a V. Then we're going to under find the consonant and mark it with a C. We're going to underline any digraphs and trigraphs that we can see. We're going to read the consonant. And then as we read it, we're going to read, by the, read each syllable. And then we're going to add each syllable together as we go. So for example, if I was going to work, read the word jackhammer, I'd sound out jack, ham, I'd put jack, ham together. And then I'd add er, jack, ham, er, to get the, just to reduce the load on working memory. So let's do some practice. So we're going to look at this word. We know that I is a vowel, C is a consonant, vowel, consonant, chop. Then I move to the next syllable. Where's my vowel? It's an I, consonant, and chop. You can mark the end of the word if you wish, but you don't have to. You could have left that blank. So this word, we would go p, ick, pick, hold that in my memory, n, ick, nick, put pick, nick together, and I make picnic. Let's look at the next word. I'm looking for the first vowel, it's e, the consonant is n, chop, d, e, n, den. Hold that in my working memory. Vowel here, consonant here. Now I'm not going to chop here because T can't be on the end on his own. Only Y can do that. So I'm just going to leave that. They're just going to stay like that. T is t, tist, add it to den, den, tist. Let's look at this one. Where's my vowel? Here's my vowel, A, consonant. Now, if I'm looking at my consonants, I've got S, H as a digraph together. So this is my consonant together. They can't be split. So now I'm going to chop after the S and the H. So I've got K, A, Sh. Looking at my second one, vowel, consonant, and at the end of the word. So I've got but ox, box, put it together with cash, cash box. Let's have a look at this word, vowel. Now again, I've got a digraph here, two letters together making one sound. That's my consonant sound together, so I have to chop after. But, uck, buck, vowel. Consonant end of word. Now, I'm going, if I just sound out et, bucket, it's not quite right. And that's what I said at the beginning about making sure we use common sense about what we know about language. Bucket? Oh, that's bucket. Because the letter E changes its sound slightly in the end of that word. But bucket probably gets you close enough in your syllable division to now be able to read the word. Let's have a look at this word. Now, this word actually starts with a digraph. And our first vowel is an E. Then I've got double L, remember I said you can't split the twins. And then I'm going to chop after. So I've got sh, e, u, shell. Looking at the second syllable, my vowel is I. I've got sh again here, which cannot be split. F, itch, f, 
fish, shellfish. Now this word again starts with a digraph. I'm going to underline that. My first vowel is I, consonant is P, and then chop, ch ip, chip. Where's my vowel? It's a U. Consonant is here. Now, can I chop off a K on the end? No, because only letter Y can be on the end on his own, so I'm going to ignore that there. Chip, m, uh, n, k, monk, chip, monk. Let's take a look at this word. So my first vowel is, a, is the O. I've got twins here, double M. I'm going to underline those, and that's my consonant. I'm going to double uh, chop after. My next one is I, double T, chop, and then double E is a digraph as well. So I'm going to go k, o, m, com, it, com, it, E, committee. Let's have a look at this one. So we're going to start with underlining the CH because that's a digraph. My vowel is I, my consonant is M, chop after the M, ch, I, m, chim. My vowel is, consonant is A, my, sorry, my vowel is A, my consonant is N, chop, chim, at, n, pan, chim, pan. And I've got Z, E, in the last one, chimpanzee. Let's look at the next one. Now, sometimes when we have lots of consonants at the beginning, that can confuse children. But the other thing that will confuse them here is that we've got two letters here as a vowel. So that's my vowel. T is my consonant. And then I chop. What often happens is they'll see the first E. They assume the second E without thinking is a consonant. And they will chop after the double E, which is incorrect. And it won't help them get to the word. So now I've got st, r, eat, street. And then I've got vowel, consonant. P can't be on his own, so I'm going to ignore him. L -a -m -p lamp, street lamp. Let's look at this one. Sometimes children get tricked because the word starts with a vowel. So I've got my vowel, my consonant, and I chop. S, S, my vowel, my consonant, and I chop. T -ab, tab, S, tab, my vowel, my consonant digraph here, and I chop. Establish. The next one here, vowel, consonant, chop, k, o, m, com. Now here in the fi in this second syllable, I've got the I working with the E as a split digraph. So I'm going to keep those together. This is my vowel, this is my consonant, but the I and the E are working together to make ein. So combine. So I'm not going to chop the E off because it's working with the I, and therefore he has to stay where he is. Let's look at this word. Starts with a vowel, just to try and catch people out. Vowel, consonant, chop. O is the vowel. L is the consonant, chop. Again, I've got the E and the I working together. So there's my vowel. Here's my consonant. And I'm not going to chop the E off the end. It becomes, it becomes it. Impolite. So if you read impolite, you're so close, you're going to get that word impolite. Even though the O probably has changed its sound a little bit in most dialects, you're still going to get impolite. impolite. Let's go with this one. So my vowel is here. My consonant is S. I'm going to chop. D, S, des. Then I've got I working with the E. Scribe. Now I've got describe. Is that close enough to describe for you to work that out? I believe for most children with reasonable language knowledge, they will be able to go from describe to describe. The ch change is so small. Let's look at this one. So we've got a vowel, consonant M, chop. Now again, we've got this split digraph happening here. So this is my vowel, this is my consonant. E is working with O, so we can't chop him off. T, R, O, M, trom, B, O, N, bone, trombone. And vowel, consonant, chop. Vowel, consonant, I, yes, look, we've got the E working with the O again, a split digraph. So we've got sun, sun, stroke, stroke, together, sunstroke. And often when we're working with some of the simpler words for, for working in syllables, we, you will find that um, it's two words put together, like sun and stroke. And I think earlier we did fish, um, shellfish, two words put together. Let's look at this one. 
So I've got vowel, consonant, chop. E is a vowel, S is a consonant, chop. I've got the vowel here working with this one to give me this as my split diagraph. So I've got t -e -l, tell, s, s, tell s, k -ope, telescope. Again, when you read that, it's close enough to come back to telescope. Again, the second E's just changed its sound a little bit. Often happens in the middle syllable of a word that the vowel becomes a bit lazy. Let's have a look at this one. So we've got vowel, consonant, chop. Now, I put a star on this one for a reason. There's a couple more with the star. There's two ways you could do this. We could just stick with vowel, consonant, chop. Vowel, consonant, ng is a digraph. So we could go frag, frag, m -n, men, fragmen, t -i -n ting, fragmenting. Or, as one of my students did really recently, where they were like, well, actually, miss, I know that this is the base word. So we had separated here, but he argued with me that he wanted to separate here and then leave this as a suffix. Now that showed me really deep understanding of words and syllables and base words and suffixes. So I'm happy to go either way with this one, which is why I put a star on it. If they can see fragment and identify that as the base word and ing is a suffix, at the end of the day, syllabification is what I would describe with my children as a spelling strategy, a spelling rule. It doesn't always work. Laws of spelling never change. Every syllable has to have a vowel. That never ever changes. But um, there's certainly these ones could be argued either way. Let's have a look at this word. So we've got vowel, consonant, chop. Now the ER here is actually making the sound er, but we still go with what the letters are. So E is a vowel letter, R is a consonant letter, even though together they are now making a vowel sound of er. Put er, vowel, consonant, chop, vowel, consonant, don't chop off the T because he can't be on his own. So I've got per, er, per, m, at, n, man, per, man, et, n, et, n, t, ent, permanent. Let's look at the next one. So I've got vowel at the start, consonant, chop, vowel, consonant, chop. Remember, ER is a vowel sound, but the letters were what we're using for, for um, segmenting. Vowel, consonant, T can't be on his own, so that's just going to stay as it is at the end of the word. So I've got in, t, er, t, inter, est, interest. Let's have a look at this one. So vowel, consonant, chop, vowel, digraph there, two letters together, chop, can't chop between the two, vowel, consonant digraph there. So it, in, in, st, all, install, ing. Let's have a look at happily. So we would go vowel, consonant, we're going to keep the twins here together, and then chop. Vowel, consonant, chop. Now you can see we've got Y on the end of the word. He, remember, he's the only letter that's allowed to be on the end of a word on his own because he's going to be making a vowel sound. So we've got hap, 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 It'll, hap, il, e. And the letter Y on the end here is making the sound E, so he's actually a vowel, and that's fine. He can be on the end of the word on his own. Let's have a look at this word. Vowel, consonant, chop. Vowel, digraph, consonant, chop. Letter Y again on the end. There's a vowel in my syllable, so that's correct. Un, luck, luck, e. Unlucky. Seem to have installing again, vowel, consonant, chop, vowel, consonant, chop, vowel, consonant, end of word, installing. Let's move to the next one. Now, vowel, consonant, chop. However, as it is an ER, we've got AR together making a vowel sound. But for the benefits of chopping, we look for the letters, whether they're just simplest form, are they a vowel or a consonant? So, K R, vowel, consonant, chop, dig, and cardigan. Okay, let's have a look at this word. Vowel, consonant, chop. Vowel, consonant, chop. Vowel, consonant. 
So d it's this, that's okay. Now we've got the word play in the middle of this word, which is our base word here. So the A and the Y. For the processes of chopping up words, if we're looking to, to chop, Y would count as a consonant here. So there would we have A is a vowel letter, Y is, usually, is a consonant letter here, and then we would chop. So dis, play, in. So vowel, consonant, chop, vowel, consonant, chop, vowel, consonant, chop, vowel, consonant, end of word. So NG is a digraph, ER making ER is a digraph, but a vowel letter and a consonant letter. OW making the OW sound is the vowel and a consonant letter. So then we would go E, M, P, OW, ER, ING, empowering. Let's have a look at this one. So vowel, consonant, chop. The two letters there are going to be working together as a digraph. Then we're going to go vowel, consonant, chop. Letter Y on his own is going to be a vowel at the end of the word. So d, r, ow, drow, s, ill, sil, e, drow, silly. Again, you're going to be close enough with this chop that it's going to help you get the word drow, silly. So here's another one where it could go two ways. See if you can work out what the two ways could be. So way one would be con, fur, ming. Way two would be to go, let's chop here because I know this is the base word and I know this is the suffix. And if your child can identify the vowel and the, the vowel, sorry, the, the base words and the suffix, then go with that. Let's have a look at this word. Vowel, consonant, chop. A, Y is a digraph. Ah, oh, two vowels here and then the consonant. So must be careful not to get confused by two vowels together and go vowel, assume it's a consonant and chop. And then we've got vowel, consonant at the end. So d, a, day, d, r, e, m, dream, ing, daydreaming. Let's look at this one. Vowel, consonant, chop. Two vowels here, consonant, so those two vowels are working together to say A, chop, vowel here, consonant, and we're going to ignore the T at the end there because we can't chop a T off onto his own. So we've got K, O, N, CON, T, A, N, CONTAIN, M, E, N, T, MENT, CONTAINMENT. Let's have a look at the next one. Vowel, consonant, chop, vowel, consonant, chop. Now O, Y are going to work together as OI, vowel, consonant and again t we can't chop him off on his own so he's going to stay there so we've got l a m flam b boy boy flamboyant flamboyant now if you know the word flamboyant you're going to change the a at the end to make it more of an er uh sound let's have a look at this word so we could go this one's got a star because there's two ways we could do this so the standard way we're going to be dis Vowel consonant chop here and keep the UR together because it's a digraph making the ER sound. Vowel here, di consonant digraph here. So I could go d is dis t er t b ing bing dis ter bing. Or I could go and keep disturb together as my base word and ing together. And the last word. Again, two possible ways. Vowel consonant chop. Vowel together, be careful, consonant chop, and then vowel consonant at the end. So I could go d is j oin t ed, disjointed, or I could keep dis as my prefix, joint as my base word, and ed as my suffix. Either way is correct. If you can read the word, it's correct. I hope this has really helped you work out and look forward to seeing you in part two.